What's going on everybody? This is Ultima iDevice Vids and today in this video we're going to be doing a walkthrough of iOS 11. So I'm going to be showing you guys some of the biggest and most noteworthy features found in iOS 11 as well as some things that I've just found while using the operating system. So I'm very excited to show you guys these features so without any further ado let's go ahead and get started. So first up one of the most noticeable changes in iOS 11 is the redesigned control center. So as you can see right here it looks completely different. I think it's absolutely beautiful and uh, just has this brand new look to it. Of course, you get this nice blur when you invoke the control center. And of course, there's much more than meets the eye here. It's not just a visual refresh. There's a lot of new functionality wise as well. Uh, you can actually add your own toggles and rearrange them. So Apple actually provided a bunch of new toggles, which you can add in the settings, which I'll talk about in a second, and rearrange them here. So that's something that people have wanted for a while, myself included. You can also 3D touch on various different elements to expand different views. We actually have a new personal hotspot toggle in here as well, which is pretty nice. And of course, again, this goes for kind of the entire interface, just 3D touching on different things to get larger views. Of course, for the brightness and volume, we have these new sliders as well. And just kind of the entire interface you can see right there, it just kind of looks different when we evoke different things here. So uh, let me just go ahead and show you guys how to add new toggles to Control Center and rearrange them because I know that's a big desire. You know, it's, it's I've said something, again, I've wanted for a while. I'm glad they've added it. But we go ahead and head over to Settings and then jump into Control Center. You can see right here we have this new page. You have Include and then More Controls. You could actually just hit Plus to add all these new things that are actually now here and those will appear in the control center so i'm just going to go ahead and add all of them in to show you guys but there's some really useful stuff here my favorite one is low power mode finally we could do that within the control center and there's tons of things in here that you could customize on the fly in control center so i just added all of them in there and now as you can see right there we have a packed control center with all these features and again the low power mode has got to be my favorite just being able to quickly enable and disable this right in here and there's various other ones, for example, create a new note, and just so many other ones that you could go through on your own time. And to rearrange them, you just drag these little handles up or down like this to rearrange, and it will take an effect. So I'm just going to move the low power mode to the top, and now as you can see right there in this bottom section, it is the first one that shows up. Unfortunately, you can't customize the top, it's just the bottom area, but I'm satisfied with that. You know, it's definitely a enough cut customization for me. Next up, we have Siri. So Siri got some great improvements. Uh, it got a new design and some new voices. It sounds much less robotic. And of course, there's female and male voices. There's also just some more features that have been added to Siri. But let me go ahead and show you guys the redesign and the new voices. Siri, what's the weather in San Francisco? Here's the weather for San Francisco, California today. So you heard the new voice. Again, I think it's definitely less robotic. And also notice the button down there has been completely redesigned. It's this nice colorful wave button there. And you can see there the waves are actually moving within the button. I think that's an absolutely great touch. It's just, you know, it goes for a really nice design. I think that's beautiful. And of course, we could just tap on it like this. Hi, Siri, to uh, ask another question just like that. So next up, let's talk about the lock screen widgets notification center situation. So iOS 11 has basically simplified that, you know, of course, on our lock screens, uh, we're used to having the lock screen page in the middle. We slide over, we have the widgets, we slide to the other side, and we have the camera. However, once you start using your device, you know, in the past, things were a little bit confusing. There's a lot of duplication, but now... Uh, basically, whenever you pull down at the notification center, as you can see right there, it's basically the lock screen that it evokes. And it will show you notifications here in the same, you know, graphical design as the lock screen. Because, of course, normally in the past, how it would work was it would show you notifications in the notification center and the lock screen, but they would look slightly different. But, of course, now everything's just simplified. It all looks very similar. If you slide over, you still have your widgets, of course. And, of course, you get this, again, same design. Slide over, you even get the camera application right within the notification center just to kind of simplify things and make everything kind of unified. So next up, we have some new app icons. Of course, you have the new App Store icon, the new iTunes Store icon as well, and the calculator icon right there. Now, the App Store and calculator themselves have both changed. And actually, the App Store in particular got a ton of, you know, focus from Apple. Uh, it's basically the app itself has been completely redesigned. As you can see right here when we open it up, it's completely different. It actually looks very similar to the music app. Uh, it basically has the same design language in there. And again, it's basically been completely revamped the way that it you know works. Basically, the different tabs at the bottom, the design language, it's all brand new, as you can see right here. And you know, I know a lot of people don't like it, a lot of people do, uh, but it is what it is, and it's definitely a refresh to the way that the App Store works. Of course, you get your updates tab search everything like this there's also a new app page as well so let me just go ahead and search for twitter real quick and we'll tap on a result you can see right there the app viewing page looks completely different as well it's a refresh so 
definitely is a lot of changes within the App Store app. The calculator app has also been redesigned as well. As you can see right there, it looks very different inside, just kind of the overall feel of it. Pretty nice. Also, the app animations have changed as well. You may have already noticed that when I open and close things. Things are just kind of a little bit different. The physics, so to speak, of launching, closing apps, everything like that. I actually really like it. I think it's a good change to the animations. Things seem fresh and more springy the way they are now. And something else I noticed was the icon labels on the dock are now gone. And I guess that makes sense, you know, because of the apps you use most, you're not going to really need the labels if you use those apps all the time. So that just kind of makes the look much cleaner. And as I mentioned earlier, the look from the music application basically has made its way to various different applications just kind of the label even inside these settings you can see right there the way that that looks the top there is very similar to the music app that you know interface is just kind of becoming standard and messages here you can see the same thing just the way that the text kind of is displayed like that and just that type of thing is becoming very standard that new look again some people hate it some people love it but it is what it is right Next up, we have the new files application that has been added to iOS 11. If you go ahead and open it up, it's basically a file manager for your device. You can manage files that are actually on your iPhone, or iPad, or you know, iPod Touch. You can also manage files on iCloud Drive and also different applications from the App Store, Google Drive, things of that nature. And you could also, you know, tag them using these different color tags down here. You know, just manage them through this application on the device. So uh, this is definitely going to be convenient for some people. And uh, once again, it's just called Files. And of course, as usual with major iOS updates, we have this brand new stock wallpaper. So for iOS 11, it's this nice beachy scene, you know, with some water. I think it's absolutely beautiful. iOS 11 kind of introduces a dark mode. So basically, as you see right here, my iPhone looks completely normal. And when I jump into apps, I have this beautiful dark theme as you see here, and you're probably asking, what's the catch? Why is it only kind of a dark mode? This looks phenomenal, and it really does. I'm not going to lie. This is perfect, and it's a huge leap of progress for people who want a dark mode. However, it's not the full thing. Essentially, it's an option called Smart Invert, and it's simply inverting the colors in areas that basically the phone detects as areas you're probably going to want it to be inverted in. So, it's not a full dark mode, and I'm assuming that Apple didn't implement a full dark mode, probably because it would be a ton of work, but this option is certainly a solution. And another example, if we jump over to photos, you have this beautiful dark theme, but again, you can see the photos themselves are not inverted. They still look perfectly fine alongside, of course, the dark theme that we have. Now, the catch is when you go into pretty much a lot of different applications, even stock applications, certain things are going to be inverted, especially websites on Safari. Pretty much every website I've gone to in Safari, I think all of them, as far as I understand, will still be inverted, so it's not going to look good. As you can see, here's my channel. <laughs> looks pretty crazy. But it's a solution. If you know you're going to be you know, sending some messages at night, you could toggle this on and still have your phone be usable you know, on the home screen in most applications. But again, you know, you're still going to run into issues with certain applications from the App Store, even stock apps and Safari in particular. And to enable this, you're just going to want to go to Settings, you go to General, Accessibility, Display Accommodations, Invert Colors, and you have Smart Invert here. You just toggle it on there, and it will work. So once again, it is definitely a good solution for people who want a dark mode. But yeah, guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough of iOS 11. And of course, this is definitely not everything found in iOS 11. There are so many things that I didn't mention. It's just, you know, I went over the overall, you know, changes, the things that you're probably going to notice. And again, the most noteworthy, biggest things. And of course, also on the iPad, you know, there's tons of additional features, you know, relating to multitasking and productivity in general. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to this channel for many more videos pertaining to iOS, jailbreaking, that kind of thing. Also, make sure to follow the channel on Twitter and like it on Facebook. With that being said, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out.